when you consider that not even the Blessed Virgin Mary can do what the priest does, when you consider that neither the angels, nor the archangels, nor Michael, nor Gabriel, nor Raphael, or any of those princes who defeated Lucifer can do what the priest does, when you consider that our Lord Jesus Christ in the Last Supper perform a miracle greater than the creation of the universe with all his grandeur by turning bread and wine into his body and his blood to feed the world, and that this portent before which angels and men kneel is daily repeated by a priest. When you consider that other miracle which only a priest can do, forgive sins, and that what he ties in the depth of his humble confessional, God, obliged by his own words, ties in the heavens, and what he unties, God instantly unties him. When you consider that humanity has been redeemed and that the world subsists because every day men and women nourish themselves from this body and this redeeming blood that only a priest can consecrate. When you consider that the world will die of the worst hunger if lack that bit of bread and that bit of wine. When you consider that this could happen because priestly vocations are lacking and when this happens the heavens will shake and the earth will explode as if God's hand would have stopped holding it. People will shout of hunger and anguish, and they will yearn for that bread, and no one shall be able to give it to them. They will long for the absolution of their sins, and no one will be able to absolve them, and they will perish with their eyes open watching of the worst of horrors. When you consider that a priest is more needed than a king, more than a soldier, more than a banker, more than a doctor, more than a teacher, because he can replace all of them, but none can replace him. When you consider that the priest celebrating Mass at the altar has a dignity infinitely higher than the king, and that he is not a symbol, not even an ambassador of Christ, but the same Christ who is repeating the greatest of miracles. When you consider all these things, you realize the immense need for promoting priestly vocations. You realize the eagerness that in all times, each family yearned that a priestly vocation would have sprouted as a flower lily from its bosom. You realize the immense respect people used to have towards the priest, which is reflected in their laws. You realize that the worst crime ever is to impede or discourage a vocation. You realize that to cause an apostasy is to be a new Judas and betray Christ once again. You realize that if a father or mother obstructs the priestly vocation of their son, they are renouncing to an incomparable title of nobility. You realize that a seminary or novitiate is more than a church, more than a school, more than a hospital. You realize that to help to construct or sustain a seminary or a novitiate is to multiply the births of the Redeemer. You realize that to award a scholarship to a young seminarian or novice is to smooth out the way towards the altar for a man who during half an hour every day will be much more than all the earth's dignitaries or all heaven's saints because he will be the same Christ sacrificing his body and blood for the life of the world.